Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. Recently, a TikTok video surfaced on the internet, and in the video you see King Combs playing basketball. And after people watched the video, they had a few questions. And one of those questions was, why in the world do you guys have beds on a basketball court? Not the one, not the two. C3! <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Come on, you know I'm not here, man. Totally, it's not the one, not the two. C3, I thought I came to <laughs> Listen, forget about the baby oil. What I need to know is this. Why in the world is it necessary to have walls that open up in a basketball court that allow secret freak off Murphy beds to come down? <laughs> I mean, what kind of games are y'all over there playing? I mean, I just can't with the Combses. I just can't. <laughs> Anyhow, Benzino has decided to weigh in on the whole Cassie Diddy situation. And after hearing what Benzino had to say, I'm sitting over here like, hmm, I wish he wouldn't have weighed in. <laughs> Watch this. You seen a video I'm, of her being No, I seen a video of one so, day out of 4,000 Right, days. but she's yes. a victim in that video. In that video, she's a victim. So victim yes. blaming will be... At, in that video. Yes. Yeah, in, so. in, in that particular moment, she was a video and that was wrong. But the other 4,000 days when she was eating lobsters and pasta in Monaco and having a great time and just living her life, there was those times too. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's easy for everybody not to focus on that because it's always easy to focus on the negative days. Of, we all have had days where done went wrong all of us especially in our culture and especially within this music culture and hip-hop culture and street culture we got to think about the other days that he was whining and dining and giving a what thousand do the other dollars days got to do with that day? nothing so when we talk about victim blaming right but if she's alleging that other things like this happen you're going to discredit her not at all i would never discredit her. if she said something happened I, number one it's not my business but number two when somebody tells you a version of their story you can only picture the story from their point of view there's other sides to the story it's not necessarily for me to judge or for me to be a detective. I just know from what I've seen. What I've seen in that video, that was disturbing and unfortunate, and I felt bad for her. She was a victim of that. But I do know that there was thousands of days that there was amazing time doing things that other women who want to be in her position, because remember, Kim was there, and Cassie came and kind of took Kim's spot. So we, we understand that Diddy was abusive towards Kim, too. Cassie necessarily wasn't calling anybody about Kim getting abused or letting anybody know that Kim was a victim. Okay, so first off, we don't even know whether or not Cassie knew that Kim was being abused. Because what dude tells their new girlfriend that they were abusing their old girlfriend? Aside from that, let me get this straight. Is Ben Zeno saying that just because Diddy and Cassie had a few good days together and he brought her a few lobster dinners and whatnot and flew her around the world during their relationship, she was supposed to just walk away and go on about her business and be thankful to Diddy even after he physically abused her in that hotel hallway and then, as she said in her lawsuit, forced himself on her in her apartment and art her even after they broke up? See, Benzino's ignoring the fact that Cassie accused Diddy of many violent acts, not just the incident in the hotel room. However, the reason why the hotel tape is very important is that it confirmed that Cassie wasn't just out here making ish up against Diddy. And what's even more important is that the incident occurred exactly the way she explained it in her lawsuit. So we know that she wasn't adding no salt, she wasn't adding no pepper, and she certainly wasn't adding no obey to season the story up. I mean, Cassie described that incident down to a T, which to me makes Cassie very credible. So when she says that he also forcibly awed her after they broke up and he was ex-trafficking her and forcing drugs down her throat, I believe Cassie wholeheartedly. And you have to understand that just because it looked like she was having good days with Diddy, we're not privy to what went on behind the scenes. So we don't know whether or not Diddy was threatening her and being like, yo, you better smile for them cameras and if you don't, I'm gonna jack you up when we get home. We don't know. But what I do know is that no man gets a pass for aring women and sex trafficking women and drugging women and doing all types of stuff just because he wined them and dined them first. I mean, think about it. Really, really think about it. And let me know if I'm wrong because I might be wrong. But by Benzino's logic, just because a dude gave you a come up, if he abuses you, you should be so thankful for the lavish gifts that you don't bring him down. I mean, for me personally, that just doesn't work because that's almost like saying you're married to somebody for nine years. Everything's going good. They give you everything. I mean, they treat you like a king or a queen. And then on your 10th anniversary, they shoot you. You're not supposed to call the cops because you're giving them brownie points for the first nine years? Absolutely not. 
Listen, let me know what you think about Benzino, saying that Diddy should get a little credit because Diddy treated Cassie good on the dates when he wasn't beating her. Let me know what you think about that in the comments, and while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, check this out. The other day, Dame Dash jumped online to share his thoughts about P. Diddy getting incarcerated. And while he was discussing Diddy, Dame Dash shared an interesting theory. According to Dame, Diddy may be incarcerated today simply because of the 30-year rule. And I know, somebody out there is like, Sauce, what's the 30-year rule? Listen, instead of me telling you, let me let Dame Dash explain it to you himself. You know what I've noticed is that there's a 30 year run, like at a certain level, I'm, I'm noticing like, so like with Harvey Weinstein and he didn't get canceled, he got put in, in jail. So he had to run for 30 years and then it all went downhill. And it seems like what happens is the first 10 years for me, I was seeing things that, cause you know, I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy, but yeah, I'm from the street. I, I you know, I did things that were illegal. So I know what could get you put in jail. This is not sustainable and I, it looks illegal to me. So I'm getting away from it. And they get away with it for 10 years. Then it goes to 20 years and you like, cause I'm like, oh shit, you, no one got stopped. You know, it's like a test. You got away with the first 10. Then you start going ham. And then that 30. So if you start rolling when you're 30, 30 years, you're 60, you still got another 30 years left. Is it worth it? So even with like an R. Kelly, like again, I, at first I was like, how did he get away with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then the next, and then they got him. And it seems like the same thing happened with Puff. They give you 30 years to really build your wealth, but because you have imperfections, you're exposed and someone can pull the plug on you at any time. The ones that are the most empowered are the ones that have the most to hide. And it seems like you have the most to hide because somebody might have lined you up so they can control what you do. You know, that's just what it seems like to me from the outside looking in. Now, after Dame Dash said that, I grabbed up my handy dandy calculator and I started crunching some numbers. And what I realized is that when Dame Dash's teeth are not falling out of his mouth, this ninja right here be spitting some ish. Because R. Kelly and his R&B group MGM made their debut on a TV show Big Break hosted by Natalie Cole in 1990. And then R. Kelly was arrested and charged with 10 counts of aggravated actual assault on February 22nd, 2019. What's that? 29 years. Similarly, Harvey Weinstein made his first critically acclaimed hit movie, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, in 1989. And then, Harvey Weinstein had to surrender himself to the authorities at NYPD's first precinct in Manhattan in May of 2018. So, that's also a 29-year run. And last but not least, Diddy made his first hit song, Flavoring Your Ear, with Craig Mack under his own record label, Bad Boy Entertainment, in 1994. And he's been living it up all the way until the day that Cassie dropped her bomb Shell lawsuit in November of 2023, which ultimately led to the downfall and arrest of Diddy, which means that his winning streak after leaving Andre Harrell and forming Bad Boy lasted for, you guessed it, 29 years. But we're not done, because Prince released his first solo album, Sign of the Times, in 1987 and passed away on April 21st, 2016, 29 years later. Michael Jackson released his first solo critically acclaimed album, Off the Wall, on August 10th, 1979, and then passed away on June 25th, 2009. He almost made it 30 years, but he didn't. He passed away 29 years later. And then Whitney Houston made her first live public debut on the Merv Griffin Show in 1983 and then passed away in 2012 and yes you guessed it 29 years later dang dame dash just might be right let me know what you think in the comments if you sell your soul to the devil and sign the devil's contract does the devil give you approximately 30 years before he snatches his worldly riches back i mean real talk do you think that the fact that harvey weinstein p diddy and r kelly's empires all fell 29 years after they initially gained solo success and then whitney houston michael jackson and prince all passed away after experiencing 29 years of mega success as solo artists do you guys think that that's coincidence or do you think nah sauce something ain't right there's something more to this listen let me know what you think about dame dash's 30 year theory in the comments and hold on wait a minute we're just getting some news in Diddy has just been hit with another lawsuit. Oh my goodness, this dude right here just can't stop and won't stop. All right, so it looks like Gloria Allwright, along with her client, Thalia Graves, have just dropped a new 26-page lawsuit on Diddy. Check this out. Gloria Allwright, and with me is our client, plaintiff, Thalia Graves. 
Today we filed a lawsuit in the United States District Court, Southern District of New York, for our client, Plaintiff Thalia Graves. In her lawsuit, Thalia, through her attorneys, sues Sean Diddy Combs, also known as the defendant, and another individual and other entities. Defendant Combs and another defendant committed a, quote, violation of New York City Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Act by viciously and violently forcing contact, oral and sexual intercourse on the plaintiff, end quote. In addition, the complaint alleges in the second cause of action that defendant Combs and another defendant committed a violation of New York civil rights law, quote, section 52 hyphen B, end quote. Defendants caused plaintiff to be de depicted in a video image, unclothed, and with intimate body parts exposed and engaged in sexual conduct with another person, end quote. Defendant Combs and another defendant published and or disseminated the videos without plaintiff's knowledge or consent. On information and belief, defendants have continued to disseminate the video, including by selling it as pornography through the present, end quote. In our complaint, we ask that, quote, Defendants should be ordered to account for and destroy all copies of the video that are in their actual or constructive possession, custody, or control, end quote. And that, quote, defendants should be temporarily and permanently enjoined from further disseminating or publishing any intimate videos of plaintiff, end quote. We also allege in the third cause of action that Combs and another defendant committed a violation of New York City Administrative Code, Section 10-180, recording and showing others the video of themselves violently the plaintiff. And the defendants disclosed an intimate image of plaintiff without her consent, end quote. As a result of these and other allegations in our complaint, we request that judgment be entered against defendants as follows. Awarding compensatory damages for all physical injuries, emotional distress, psychological harm, anxiety, humiliation, physical and emotional pain and suffering, family and social disruption and other harm in an amount to be determined at trial. Awarding punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial. You know something? I don't even know what to say anymore. If Diddy is in fact guilty of committing the countless crimes that he's being accused of, the dude is sick and needs to be off the streets permanently. Now, of course, this and other civil cases filed against Diddy don't have any direct bearing on his federal case because the feds don't handle actual abuse crimes. But these women can be called as character witnesses to testify to the fact that he did indeed drug abuse, use, and traffic women by force to satisfy his seemingly insatiable lusts. Now, after Gloria Allred read the excerpts from the complaint, her client Thalia spoke out. And when speaking about Diddy's alleged abuse, Thalia said, the internal pain of being assaulted has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by enduring the assault. It's a pain that reaches into the very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Some of the hardest parts of this pain are the shame and the guilt I've experienced that plays a negative part in my day-to-day -day ability to function properly. Being blamed, questioned, and threatened has often made me feel worthless, isolated, and sometimes responsible for what happened to me. Listen, let me say this real quick. If you're someone who has been abused, physically, emotionally, however, you are not responsible for the fact that somebody abused you. That is on them. All right, so Thalia continued on to say, flashbacks, nightmares, and intrusive thoughts make me feel like it's a constant struggle. I also suffer from physical problems such as chronic pain and actual discomfort. The violation I've experienced during the assault has had lasting effects on my body causing ongoing health problems and complications. The combination of physical and emotional pain has created a cycle of suffering from which it's so hard to break free. I want to continue on this journey towards recovery and healing. I'm glad that he's locked up, but that's just a temporary feeling of relief. Listen, I think they need to give P. Diddy a psych eval because if these and all the other allegations are true, he's a mentally unstable, disturbed sociopath who may need to receive additional treatment in addition to being locked up. I mean, it seems to me that if all of these allegations are true, money may have corrupted his soul so much that he truly believed that he could own people and that people were nothing more than toys for him to play with that he could use for his own amusement. Additionally, I want you to notice that many of the lawsuits say the same thing. 
that Diddy didn't act alone. So, I'm gonna need the investigators who are out here investigating all of these Diddy cases to start reeling in some of his co-conspirators because all of them need to face the music, not just Diddy. I mean, they gotta all pay for what they were out there doing. And I am so sorry if some of his co-conspirators end up being some of your favorite hip-hop artists, some of your favorite R&B artists, or some of your favorite actors. Because just because you make a good song or a movie doesn't mean that you can run around using, abusing, r and doing whatever you want to people. Which brings me to Soldier Boy. The other day, Soldier Boy came out online to share his thoughts about Diddy. And Soldier Boy said that if he was ever around Diddy and Diddy tried to diddle him, then Diddy would have got murked. Soldier Boy said, and I quote, If Diddy ever tried me like any of these gay rappers, I would have unalived his biatch ASS. You know something? Soldier Boy is making me think about a conversation that I had yesterday with a mega producer. Okay? I was talking to the producer and I said, Yo, did you ever work with P. Diddy? And he was like, Yeah. I was like, Yo, did he ever try you? And the producer was like, Nah, he ain't try me. And I was like, What would you have done if he did try you? And first, the producer was like, Yo, I'd have cuffed him up. But then he paused. And he was like, You know something? I'd have just walked away. Because that ninja right there is a killer. And I got a family. See, Soldier Boy's over there talking all that tough guy stuff, but maybe that's because he doesn't know that word on the streets has always been that Diddy allegedly has more bodies than King Vaughn. I mean, think about it. Al B. Shaw has recently come out and said in not so many words that P. Diddy tried to murk him, and he also said in his own cryptic way that he believes that P. Diddy took out Kim Porter too. In a recent post, Al B. Shaw said, Peep game. For over a decade and a half, I've been posting about and tagging random law enforcement agencies in hopes to protect loved ones, avoid unalivings and tragedies that could have all been avoided. Despite this, I've been ignored, ridiculed, and medically silenced to cover up these crimes that you're all now aware of by a very aggressive PR team and costly campaign to silence and physically harm me from exposing. It only aimed to prevent me from further sharing publicly the facts and insights that Kim Porter shared with me during our frequent and intimate conversations in her selfless attempt to save my life by sharing frequent plans to do harm and possibly by ending my life. I'm writing this post to formally request an investigation into an entire group of individuals who worked at or around the residence of Miss Kimberly Porter, including the publicist who assisted drafting this. It's come to my attention that these persons were also instructed to steal her computer and mobile devices, which contained her original book notes. Original book notes are distinct from the fabricated BS and offensive pages circulated via Amazon, which depict graphic actual acts involving me that never took place and were edited and added after Miss Porter's tragic unaliving. I urge you to consider who authorized such a fictitious publication without categorizing it as a calculated fiction. The publicists and conspirators worked in concert from separate camps launching this campaign which appears to be a very personal and deliberate distraction from their involvement in covering horrific crimes assisted in and perplexed the public for many years, which I have personally experienced and cautiously deemed just a medical crisis for legal reasons until the rest of these atrocities were uncovered by authorities making it more believable to a gullible public that has been fooled for so long to be continued. Now, after saying that, Al B. Shaw jumped online and also said this. We thought you were crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. Pray for the young people. You know what this is. It's not a game. And please understand very clearly, there is zero Wusa moments. Me talking about situations for over more than a decade and a half. And then all of a sudden everybody woke up like, whoa. Yo, we thought you were crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. I'm crazy to tell a mother on three forms of public transportation across a bridge to get to work to support me that, hey, I may have to pass on these opportunities for scholarships because I'm going to write a song and we're going to eat for the rest of our lives. That's crazy. But what I am not is a liar. That I'm not. All I did was give the science. I was ignored, laughed at, ridiculed, things of that nature. But that's okay. My God is so much bigger than my God got me. And I got you. Now, not only has Albie Shaw called Cap on a new unauthorized memoir that was supposedly written by Kim Porter by some dude who claims that he got access to her USB. But Albie Shaw also said that he never had a three-way, a two-way, or even a one-way with Diddy, as was alleged in said book. Now, 
The other day, somebody asked me, they were like, Sauce, how come you're not talking about Kim Porter's book like everybody else? And the answer was simple. It's because I like to deal in reality. <laughs> and speaking about reality, I'm really concerned about Quincy because I cannot imagine what it must be like to have your father accuse your stepfather of unaliving your mother and attempting to unalive him too. I mean, that right there is crazy. So, let's keep Quincy and all of Kim's children in our prayers. I mean, they need it. But, let me say this. If there is one good thing that seems to be coming out of this whole thing, it's this. Now that Diddy is caught up in all his legal drama, it appears that Quincy is starting to spend more time with his father, Albie Shaw, instead of being all up under Diddy. And that's a good thing, because because now that Kim Porter is gone, these two really need to strengthen their father-son bond without the diddler being all up in the mix. <laughs> at the White House. The Browns at the White House. What the fuck is it? <laughs> How'd that happen? How'd that happen? Lucky we got no paint. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna bring cans of paint up in here. You already know. Listen, I am so happy to see those two spending time together because I just know in my heart that Albie Shaw is going to be such a better influence on Quincy than Diddy. And last but not least, Meek Mills has come out and said that he wants to hire an investigative team to figure out why his name is being attached to Diddy's case. Meek Mills said, I want to hire an investigative team, 100k cash to find out every specific detail involving Meek Mills' name to Diddy case. I also want them to look at who's powering the media involving Meek. Okay, now it makes sense, because I was trying to figure out why the Scooby-Doo mystery machine was parked at the gas station, and now I know. It's because Meek is investigating. <laughs> Listen, tell Meek he can save his money, or he can send his money to me, because I can tell him exactly why his name is always attached to Diddy's. Perhaps it's because you allowed this dude Diddy to call you Daddy when you were in the pool, or because you allowed Diddy to take you shopping so you could go out looking like twinsies, or maybe it's because you are over there at a party rapping Luther to Diddy under the red light. <laughs> Check this out. I see Puff, you know, around you a lot lately. Now, how does that feel to see Puff, you know, co-signing you? Puff just a fucking G, man. He like being around real young G's. Like, I'm gonna tell you, man, I've been on Jets with Hole, on missions with Puff. And I mean, they just respect the young niggas that they see them in when they was younger. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Meek Mill and Pete Diddy matching outfits picture goes viral after Meek Mill comes up in this lawsuit, right? You got this lawsuit where this dude is suing P. Diddy and people been going through it. He brought, uh, uh, I believe, 
a young Miami name came up in it, like about her cousin, you know, doing some things. And then the dude also stated that P. Diddy was bragging about getting with somebody who is a Philadelphia rapper who used to date Nicki Minaj. God damn, Meek. No, Meek, no. Boy. Boy, it's getting hot up in that kitchen now. It's getting hot up in that kitchen. So now all of a sudden, this pic done came out. They got the masking shirt on and all that. Boy, ain't, ain't looking good out here. Ain't looking good out here for digging them. Ain't looking good. And this is just the beginning. You let them tell it. It's just the beginning. <laughs> Oh my goodness, do I need to say more? Meek, save your money. <laughs> no need to hire a private investigator. Listen, let me know what you think about King Combs dribbling his balls on a basketball court that has secret drop down beds in the walls. Benzino saying, sure, Diddy whipped Cassie on a day that we saw, but he sure did Diddy treated her good and gave her gifts on the other days. So, that's gotta count for something. Dame Dash saying dudes like Diddy, R. Kelly, and Harvey Weinstein get 30 years to shine and then time's up. Soldier Boy saying if Diddy would've tried him, he would've unalived Diddy. Al B. Shaw calling for more investigations and also calling Cap on the new Kim Porter book. Quincy and Al B. Shaw getting a little father and son time in and Meek Mills saying he's willing to pay 100K to hire private investigators to find out how his name got all up in the Diddy Cassie case. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about all of that in the comments and while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Peace. <laughs>